And hello, everybody, and welcome to the Movie Pit Podcast. I am your host, Christian. Thank you very much for joining me this week. It's uh, it's been an interesting week this week, to say the least. It's been a, it's been a little bit on the light news side of things. We do have some big news items to talk about, of course, but uh, mostly this week has been all about the movie trailers. There's been a lot of trailers that dropped this week, so without further ado, let's uh, try to get right to the podcast. Obviously, this is your first time listening. Hello, first of all. Forgive me for moving on from that, but if this is your first time listening, this is, of course, The Movie Pit, where we talk about all the latest breaking movie news in the world of movie news, obviously, or the week that was, I should say. Talk about everything. Talk about movie news, talk about movie trailers, we're going to talk about the movies that are coming out this weekend for all you guys to enjoy. It's going to be an extra long weekend to, for some people. It is, uh, of course, uh, the Independence Day, at least here in the States. Uh, so we're going to get right to it. Now, before we get to the movie news, I do want to mention I did do a review, a spoiler-filled review for Transformers of Last Night. If you haven't listened to that, go give that a listen. I swear and uh, yell a little a little bit <laughs> so uh you guys can go uh give that a listen if you haven't already and uh yeah all right so let's get right to the movie news this week with the big news items that came out after the podcast went up last week the first one and this is a bit of a question mark only because i think it was buried in a report by a lot of people and i haven't seen any updates on it uh but i'm going to report anyway it looks like David Finchner is officially attached to direct World War Z. Now, this is according to uh, one of the uh, chiefs over at Paramount in an interview with The Hollywood Reporter where he confirmed that David Finchner was officially signed on to direct. Now, Brad Pitt is coming back to star in the film and produce, and he does also say that they are in advanced development, quote-unquote, uh, on the sequel. And other than that, there's no other news to report. Finchner was uh, rumored to direct the film earlier this year, and a couple months ago he said he was going to be in final talks. But uh, if this is the case, this is this is some this isn't like a source. This is coming straight from a, a, a chief at Paramount who said this. So it, it could be true. Maybe David Finchner now is officially attached to direct World War Z two, which uh, is pretty cool. I'm not going to lie, it's, it's pretty interesting. Of course, it will reunite him with Brad Pitt. Uh, of course, the two did uh, uh, Fight Club and uh, Seven together. So, And Curious Case of Benjamin Button. So they've done three movies together. This will be their fourth movie together. I think that would be, uh, be kind of cool. All right, so let's move on to the next news item that came out last week. Dazzler. Dazzler will appear in X-Men Dark Phoenix. According to Entertainment Weekly, the next X-Men film will feature another fan-favorite mutant in The Dazzler. The character was uh, was meant to appear in the last film, X-Men Apocalypse, in just an Easter egg fashion. She wasn't actually going to appear, but she does. There is a there is a picture of her appearance in the movie online. There's a photo. It was supposed to be in a uh, in a montage sequence with the mutants at the mall if you remember that part uh in the movie it was like two it was like two minutes that they were at the mall but like it was supposed to be like this whole big montage of them at the mall and in one of the scenes uh cyclops and there's an image online of this like i mentioned uh, cyclops pulls up a uh, a vinyl because the, they were in the in their 80s so he pulls up a vinyl and it has dazzler on the cover when he's talking next, when he's talking to uh, to Gene, so like I said, the, the image is online. If you want to go see it, in the Easter egg for X Men Apocalypse, she was played by Taylor Swift. Now, per the report from Entertainment Weekly, Dazzler quote will pop up, but only in a small role, and there is no plan at the moment to have Swift play her. So they can easily recast Dazzler in the movie. Doesn't necessarily mean that Taylor Swift will play her in. Uh, Dark Phoenix, and of course, if it's a small role, we don't know, you know, how big a role will be. If it's like a concert scene, or maybe she just pops up in uh, at the school or something, we we, we don't know. So, um, if I mean Taylor Swift, she does have some acting roles under her belt. Uh, she was in, uh, she's been in a lot of movies that not a lot of people saw. So there is that. She was in uh, Valentine's Day. She was in an episode of The New Girl. She was in The Giver. And that was her most recent appearance, and she also did voice work for the Lorax. So, 
I mean, I don't. I mean, it's 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 a small role, so I think we don't know the the significance of the scene or of her role in the movie. So I mean, I don't know. I'm like, I don't think of Taylor Swift as an actor, so I think maybe it'd probably be a good idea to maybe recast Dazzler, and I think maybe some fans will agree with that. But we'll see. We'll see what happens with that. Uh, of course, X Men: Dark Phoenix will start shooting soon. I think all the cast is already in. I think they're. I think they're filming in Vancouver. They're, I think they're already over in Vancouver because there was a picture released online with some of the cast members, uh, with uh, Justin Trudeau, which is of course one of the the big government guys. I forgot. Uh, I forgot what it was. Prime Minister? Is that what he is? I think. I, mean, it's, I, think, I think that's what he is. But uh, but yeah. The, so they're already over there in, uh, in Vancouver, getting ready to film. X Men: Dark Phoenix will be released next year on November second. They will bring back most of the uh, most of the cast from the last film. Of course, James McAvoy, Michael Fassbender, Jennifer Lawrence, Nicholas Hoyt, all return along with Sophie Turner, of course, playing Jean Grey, aka the Dark Phoenix in this movie. Ty Sheridan, Alexandra Ship, Cody Smith McPhee, and uh, they are in talks with Jessica Chastain to play Leolandra from the Shi'ar Empire, which uh, if you're, of course, a big X-Men fan, or at least a fan of the Dark Phoenix arc in the comics, you know that she plays a very big role in that. So, there you go. Uh, and I believe we have one more... Yes, we have one more news item. It was a trailer that came out. Actually, we have two news items, but one of them is connected to this week's news items. So I'm going to get to that when we get when uh, when when we get to this week's news. But the... Um, the next news item is the first trailer for Pitch Perfect 3 came out, and uh, maybe fans will be happy with it. Get the camera on, Doc. Get the camera on. She's right there. The Barton Bell is an unlikely group of not men who somehow managed to win at something that didn't have to do with baking. I can hear you. They've graduated college, have spread their wings, and are attempting to fly. Papaya players delight? With a shot of white privilege? Hopefully not becoming the failures we all expect them to be. I feel really good about where I'm at right now. I'm trying to get into vet school. Fingers crossed. <laughs> where are they now? My name is Fat Amy Winehouse, so let's get cracking. I quit my job. You got fired? No, I quit. It's fine. <laughs> oh, come on. This is an overreaction. I would do anything to sing with you guys again. Anything. You guys. Every year, the USO puts on this performance to support the troops in Europe. What if I could get us an invite? Yeah, I've suddenly got a bunch of free time, so... Hell yeah! <laughs> here we go, here we go. It's my turn to make history. Guys, we've never competed against bands that actually have instruments, so what's the plan? I'm coming up, so you better get this party started. I'm coming out. You guys just sing other people's songs, like karaoke. Karaoke? Oh, no, no, no. That's so cute. From calamity, this is serenity, veracity, and charity. If I joined your group, I could be obesity. Oh. <laughs> so. Here we go, here we go. When I'm down, they'll remember me. Another day on stage for the Bellas. This is their big plummet. Their fade out. Into nothingness. <laughs> You sure about this? Have I ever let you down? All the time. What? You're very unreliable. It's like one of the hallmarks of your personality. And you're not remembering all the times I've been awesome. Oh! Bang, bang! Bang, bang! Let Taka finish this. Yeah! I love you, awesome nerds! Well, stop dealing with that job. Try to have some dignity. Yeah, well, we don't do anything with dignity, okay? They really do need to join the workforce. Yes. I haven't watched any of the Pitch Perfect movies. I will be honest, I have not watched any of them. Uh, I, I started watching the first one because I was just I happened to be in the room when when, when the first one was on uh, here at here at my house. Uh, my sister was watching TV and I was I was about to leave the house and I watched like the first ten minutes of the movie, but I never I've, I haven't watched any of them. They just I, I don't know. I just I'm not saying they're bad movies. Obviously, there's a huge fan base. And I made three of them now. But, um, I don't know, I just haven't been, a f I, you know, I know, I know of them, I just, I don't know, I'm not, you know, I, I don't know, 
Uh, maybe I will watch them. Maybe I'll just watch them one day. Maybe I'll watch them one day on TV. So uh, the trailer. As for the trailer itself, I mean, it looks like there looks like they're going bigger. It looks like they've been going bigger and bigger ever since uh, the first one. There, it looks like there's they're on a boat and it explodes for some reason. I don't know what the hell's going on with that, but there you go. Uh, Pitch Perfect Three will come out later this year on December twenty second. So by the end of the year, right around Christmas time. So. Let's move on to this week's news items, and of course, as we always do, we're going to keep some of the structure here. Structure's always good, we're going to talk about trailer talk, so we're going to zip past some of these because I, I either have not a lot to talk about or just want to mention them. Uh, the first trailer for, oh my god, I can't be able to say this, My Little Pony the movie has been released, and um, yeah, this is the thing with starting a podcast. Especially when you have a segment called Trailer Talk, you have to watch trailers now. I mean, I don't have to watch trailers, but I feel like I have to, especially for the big ones, for the big movies. And I ended up watching the My Little Pony. I'm not going to watch this movie, by the way. I'm not. I'm not a brony. So, I, I don't, and for, 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 for those of you guys who don't know, bronies are the men, because there are men who like My Little Pony, from like the ages of like... There's like a certain age, I forgot what the age was, but there's like grown men, like in their 30s, even older, who like My Little Pony. No disrespect, I'm not, I'm not, you know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say anything, but uh, there, there are people out there that like them, like My Little Pony, uh, guys that like My Little Pony. So if you're saying like, oh, this movie's, you know, directed toward them, no, it, I mean mostly yes, but no, there, there's probably gonna be some grown ass men at your screening of My Little Pony the movie. Uh, so yeah, I mean, this, and, and the voice cast is, I mean, they got a really good voice cast, so, um, they have the voices of Tara Strong, Ashley Bell, Andrew Libman, Tabitha St. Germ- Germain, I think those are the people that voice them on the show, if I'm correct, uh, which I think I saw something, I read something like that, but the voice cast also includes Emily Blunt, Zoe Saldana, Kristen Chenoweth, Liv Schreiber, Tay Diggs, and Michael Pena, so... That's this is a pretty like good like voice cast and then they're doing My Little Pony the I, I don't know it's not for me let's put it that way it's not for me the movie comes out October sixth go watch the trailer if you want uh, so there's other trailers which, again like I said we're just gonna skip right some of skip the skip through some of these I can't talk now My Little Pony messed me up uh, there is a new trailer a new short trailer. For A24's uh, Good Time, it stars Robert Pattinson. That comes out on August 11th. He plays a, uh, a a thief with his brother, and his brother gets caught, and it's pretty much him trying to uh, get his brother out of uh, prison. So, there's that. Uh, a new trailer for the dark comedy Ingrid Goes West with Audrey Plaza and Elizabeth Olsen has been released. That also comes out on August 11th. Uh, Audrey Plaza plays kind of this uh, unstable woman named Ingrid who fixates on a character played by Elizabeth Olsen's Instagram and she starts kind of modeling her life after hers and then she finally moves to California to become her best friend. Uh, the movie premiered at Sund- at the Sundance Film Festival where it got a pretty decent amount of good reviews. So... Uh, Ingrid Goes West, that again, comes out August 11th, that is a limited release I do believe, uh, the film also stars O'Shea Jackson Jr. and Wyatt Russell, so there's that uh, the new tra- a new international trailer, UK trailer, for Steven Sonnenberg's Lucky Logan or Logan Lucky, I should say uh, which comes out on August 18th, has been released the film stars Channing Tatum and Adam Driver as two brothers who try to reverse uh, a, self, uh, a supposedly self-imposed family curse by uh, going and pulling off a heist of uh, the uh, of a motor of uh, the Charlotte Motor Speedway, and they gather this little crew of theirs. One of them being Daniel Craig, who plays a character named Joe Bang, who is just a completely different side of what we've seen Daniel Craig play before. Uh, so this is a UK trailer, and I usually don't bring up the international trailers because, you know, sometimes they're just, they have scenes switched around, sometimes they have just little extra tidbits. The Logan Lucky trailer from the UK, their trailer actually has a little bit more story in it and shows a lot more new scenes in there. So 
uh, give it a shot if you want to. If you're already excited for this movie, or if you have, or you're not sold on it yet, give this give give the trailer a watch, and uh, I'm pretty sure you'll you'll be uh, you'll be up for it. The film also stars Riley Kehoe, Catherine Catherine, sorry Catherine Watterson, Seth MacFarlane, Katie Holmes, Sebastian Stan, and Hilary Swank. So there you go with that. Uh, the next trailer we're gonna talk about is The Greatest Showman. This movie is a musical based off the life of P.T. Barnum, played by Hugh Jackman, and follows him through uh, follows him from his poverty-stricken childhood to the launch of his first circus in New York. Now, of course, P.T. Barnum is, yes, that Barnum from Bart Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey. So this is about his life before starting that, uh, that of course, massive circus. Zac Efron is in the film. He plays Barnum's business partner in the movie. Who falls in love with a trapeze artist played by Zendaya? Of course, we'll see. Uh, we'll see next week in uh, Spider-Man: Homecoming. Michelle Williams also appears in the film as Barnum's wife, Charity. The film also stars Rebecca Ferguson, Paul Sparks, and Yaha Abdul Mateen II. Um, the trailer. I mean, it's not that. I mean, it's not bad. I didn't realize this movie was going to be a musical. I think. I, I, I'm pretty sure it was probably in the reports, but I think they hit it very well that this movie is going to be a musical. The movie looks fine. It just, it, I, I didn't really know what to expect from the movie in terms of tone and everything. And it looks like they're going for this very, you know, bring bring the whole family kind of tone. The movie is being released on Christmas Day or December 25th for those who don't celebrate Christmas. Uh, so they're, I mean... It's okay. It's not. It's not a bad trailer. It doesn't look like a bad movie, but uh, we'll see. Moving on, trailers. The first trailer for the Jackie Chan and Pierce Brosnan action thriller, The Foreigner, was released. This movie comes out on October thirteenth. Jackie Chan plays uh, a character who starts this little very deadly game of cat and mouse with a government official played by Brosnan after his daughter is killed in an act of terrorism and Brosnan's character may have clues to the killer's identity and this trailer got past me I knew this trailer was was out but for whatever reason I put off watching it uh, and I finally sat down and watched it and I was like wow this movie looks this movie looks pretty damn good uh, it looks like we will get to see a different side of Jackie Chan. He's not necessarily playing like the wacky hero. He's playing a very, uh, I want to say grounded, but he's just playing, a, he's blurring the lines. Put it that way. You know Jackie Chan's going to be the hero, but he's blurring the lines of hero and vigilante a little bit. So it, it, it honestly does not look that bad. It looks pretty good, and I cannot wait to, to watch this on the big screen. Chanky Chan and Pierce Brosnan, I think this is going to be pretty good. The Foreigner is what it's called. Again, coming out on October 13th. There was a new trailer for Atomic Blonde. It's uh, it's kind of like the other one. Not re- not almost like the other one, but there's a lot of new scenes in it. Kind of the same basic little structure. Uh, shows of a lot more action. A lot more of the car stuff. There's just really cool one, uh, one continuous take shot inside a car. Uh, that we saw briefly in in the in the last trailer, but uh, it's it's a pretty cool trailer. If you're excited already for Atomic Blonde, this is just going to get you more excited and uh, more antsy for it to finally come out. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, so yeah, go check it out. It's a, it's a it's a it's a really good trailer. It's the final trailer. Go uh, go check it out. The movie comes out in uh, the 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 last week of July, uh, July twenty eighth. That's where it is. Yeah. The first trailer for the horror film Polaroid. The film is based off a short film that uh, the director of the short film will direct the uh, the feature length film. It's becoming kind of a bit of a trend lately with Lights Out, of course. Um, although this doesn't look as good as Lights Out, but no, uh, we never know. We never know. Uh, anyway, uh, the film follows a high school loner called Bird Fetcher. Yes, that is the name of the character, played by uh, Catherine Prescott, and has no idea what dark secrets are tied to the Polaroid vintage camera she stumbles upon. But it doesn't take long to discover that those who have taken their picture meet a tragic end. So it's a bit. Uh, watching the trailer, it's a bit like Final Destination. Uh, lights out a little bit, and even uh, the ghost bump, the goose ghost bumps, goosebumps. <laughs> what the hell was I talking about? The goosebumps uh, story, uh, say cheese and die, which kind of has the same 
presence or uh, not presence uh, premise. So I'm trying to say that's kind of what it looks like from from the from the trailer. Uh, I mean the concept's good. I mean the concept can be interesting. Of course the execution of it is going to be uh, what either makes or breaks this movie and. The trailer itself doesn't... I mean, it, it looks okay. I mean, this movie's coming out on August 25th. It's the last week of August. It's uh, it's not a great sign, really, if you're coming out the, at the, the last week of August. But, I don't know, maybe it's just one of those dumb horror films we all watch. I mean, so, we'll, we'll see. We'll, we'll see how, how that turns out. So, let's move on to the next uh, two trailers. The big trailers of the week, maybe for a lot of people. The first trailer is a Green Band and a Red Band trailer were released for the Bad Mom sequel, A Bad Mom's Christmas. It's the most wonderful time. Christmas is a magical time, full of wonder, excitement, and joy. A time for making lasting memories with family and friends. But do you know the secret behind what makes Christmas so special? Moms. Moms working their asses off, cooking, wrapping, decorating, and shopping. I think I can do this sober. You guys want to get drunk at the food court? Ooh, yeah. I do this how I like. I'm deep. I feel like a giant bike. stress ball from like November to New Year's. Yeah. I spend months picking out the perfect present for everyone. You know the only thing I get in return? Coupons for free back rubs. That's not okay. Bad yeah. back rubs. Remember when the holidays were actually fun? Let's take Christmas back. Where's your tree? I didn't want to waste time Christmas tree shopping. I actually just wanted to enjoy Christmas this year. Amy, you are a mom. Moms don't enjoy, they give joy. That's how being a mom works. Uh. Wow, the house looks really nice. Oh, thank you. Yes. Your dad is awesome. I thought you hated him. Wait, why, why would you say that? I heard you and daddy in the bedroom. You kept screaming at him. Those were just, they were happy screams. And then you punched the wall and yelled the F word. Daddy and I were just playing a little fun grown up game. You played the game seven times. Six and a half. The moms, of course, played by Mila Kunis, Kristen Bell, and Catherine Hahn, return to deal with the stresses of Christmas season and to make matters worse. As you heard from the trailer, their mothers have arrived to town. Cheryl Hines, Christine Barkin-Rinsky, Jay Hernandez, Peter Gallagher, and Susan Sarandon star in the movie. I mean, I was very pleasantly surprised by Bad Moms. I wasn't really expecting much. I thought it was going to suck, to be honest. And I walked in and I watched it and I had a blast. I actually really thought it was, it was a really just fun movie. I mean, some of the parts weren't overly, you know, funny. But for the most part, this was a very surprising movie. It was a fun movie. And I liked it. And when I found out they were doing a sequel, it wasn't too surprising. It made a crap ton of money off its very tiny budget. And I think this one will probably make the same amount of crazy amount of money that the first one made. So, Bad Mom's Christmas comes out November 3rd. Like I said, there's two trailers, a green band and a red band trailer. So go uh, check those out if you, uh, if you want. Uh, finally, the big trailer of the week, at least probably in my opinion, is the first trailer for Jumanji, Welcome to the Jungle. Wow, this is a fun group. Welcome to detention. Spencer, Bethany, Fridge, Martha, you're all here for a reason. Hey, person walking! You should be thinking about who you are and who you want to be. You'll have plenty of time to figure that out while you're cleaning out the basement. Are you gonna help, or are you too pretty? I'm too pretty. Yo, what's this? A game for those who seek to find a way to leave their world behind. Jumanji. You pick a character, and you're that person in the game. Which one do I pick? I don't think it matters that much. Moose Finbar. Sounds like a badass. I'll be the curvy genius. Dr. Smolder Bravestone. I guess I'm Ruby Roundhouse. Where's the rest of me? Oh my god. Fridge? 
Yeah, I'm Frizz. Who are you? It's me, Spencer. Who is she? Martha? Why am I wearing half a shirt and short shorts in the jungle? I think we got sucked into Jumanji and we become the avatars we chose. So that means Bethany? Oh, Wait, Bethany? Don't look at it! <gasps> no! I'm an overweight middle-aged man. Well, I don't have my claret in, and all I see around here is Paula. Well, I don't have a top two feet in my body! Damn, that is a man right there. Don't cry, don't cry. Don't cry, it's gonna be okay. Welcome to the jungle! This is a video game, which means we all have special skills. Why am I running so slow? That was so intense. I like can't even with this place. Watch your step in here. Maybe we're all in a coma. What? That old game machine must have elected you to us and now we're all Oh my god! You better get in there and save her. I'm not gonna get in there. You get in there. Yeah, I got a backpack on you. You don't get in water with a backpack. Everybody knows that. The film follows four high schoolers, played by Alex Wolf, Sir Darius Blaine, Morgan Turner, and Madison Eisman, who during their time in detention come across an ancient powerful game of Jumanji, now a video game form. Uh, when they start to play the game, they are instantly sucked into the game's world. Once there, they take on the appearance of their game's avatars, played by Dwayne The Rock Johnson, Kevin Hart, Karen Gillan, and Jack Black. The film also stars Nick Jonas, who was in the trailer, Bobby Can Cannavale, who's also in the trailer, I think he plays the villain of the movie, Reese Darby, and Missy Pyle. The film comes out on December 20th. Doesn't look too bad, to be honest. The movie is not a remake, it is not a prequel, it is not a reboot of any sort. It is a spiritual sequel to the first film. The Obviously, they changed it up to a video game. I've seen some people kind of already upset about that for some reason. Um... Cause it's not a board game anymore but of course it makes sense a little bit to, for it to be a video game considering it is taking place in our time and most people will know about video games i don't think i mean people still play board games but i don't think people play board games enough nowadays to really i mean no like they're in detention they're not going to pick up a board game and start playing a board game unless it's like you know they're not going to start playing monopoly uh during detention it makes sense that they be a video game but you know whatever trailer doesn't look too i mean the trailer doesn't look that bad to be honest i'm not gonna lie i mean I, I was very hesitant about the movie as well not because not because they were potentially going to remake or reboot it even though like i said it's not a remake or a reboot i was just very you know i was very hesitant about the movie because i was like do we really need another jumanji movie uh and then the cast started coming together and i thought it was uh, not that bad of a cast the idea of you know these high schoolers being transformed into video game characters is kind of cool uh one of the girls in the movie of course she gets transformed into jack black and uh i don't know i mean just it doesn't look that bad to be honest i'm somewhat looking forward to this movie now so yeah there you go so those are the trailers that came out this week of course at least at the time of this recording if you want to go check out the trailers yourselves you can go down below to the description slash show notes area and go uh check out the links now let's move on to this week's movie news items shall we like i mentioned there was one movie news item that i held off talking about until now and that was alden Ehrenreich was reportedly the first to voice concerns about the direction of the han solo movie of course we already know about the whole han solo movie shake-up where phil lord and chris miller were uh, fired in some some people's wording uh over creative differences with the the tone and everything of the story or of the movie, I should say. Uh, but apparently, Alden, Alden Ehrenreich, the lead playing Han Solo, was, like I mentioned, the first to raise concerns over the direction of former directors Phil Lord and Chris Miller. According to a report by StarWarsNews.net, which, again, you should take this as a grain of salt, but there was enough outlets reporting on this part, Arian Reich had concerns with production as filming progressed. He started to worry that Laura Miller's screwball comedy angle was starting to interfere with what the with the character of Han Solo is really about. Even if he was a younger, more reckless take on the character, one uh, than the one that we met in the, the cantina in The New Hope, one source described it as Ali comparable to Jim Carrey's performance in Ace Ventura at times. 
Ehrenreich let his concerns be known to one of the producers, who then told Kennedy, a.k.a. Kathleen Kennedy, the head of Lucasfilm, and one of the producers on the movie, about it, which led to her decision to over to uh, yeah, look over the existing footage and, of course, end up firing Phil Lord and Chris Miller. The report went on to say that Kathleen Kennedy and Lawrence Kasdan, one of the writers of the movie, and, of course, a long-time uh, stable of the Star Wars franchise, uh, quote, really, really liked Arian Reich's take on Han, but objected to some of the scenes as being, quote, too zany. Now, this leads in and leaks into more behind-the-scenes trouble from the young Han Solo film that was uh, reported on at the beginning of the week. So, like I mentioned, Phil Lord, Chris Miller, gone over creative differences. They bought in Ron Howard to be the director of the movie. But the Hollywood Reporter went on to bring some new levels to the mix about all this. So, again, this is all, t- this should all, all of this, I should have mentioned this last week, all of this should be taken as a grain of salt because we don't know what the real story was. We're, we weren't there. So, just take this all as a grain of salt. Even if the sources are reliable, we just take it for what it is. Take it at face value. Put it that way. All right, so the Hollywood Reporter reports that back in May, when production moved from May to the Canary Islands, by the way, they they started filming at the end of ju- uh, January, so this is back in May, not too long ago, when they moved, again, when they moved production to London, to the Canary Island, to the Canary Islands, editor of the film Chris Dickens was replaced with Oscar-winning editor Pietro Scalia. Moreover, Lucasfilm was reportedly, quote, not entirely satisfied, end quote, with the performances that was being developed, uh, being delivered by Arian Reich as Han Solo. That led them to hire an acting coach to come in and work with them. Now, the outlet does note that hiring an acting coach in and of itself is not unusual, but doing so this far late in production is. So, again, going back to that earlier part of them being happy with Arian Reich's performance kind of contradicts what's being said right here. Anyway, the outlet continues uh, continued by bringing back Lord Miller's improvisational style to the mix that Lucasfilm was not happy that Lord Miller used far fewer setups, which resulted in less options during the editing room in terms of coverage. Now, obviously, we always see these jump cuts in, in, the, in between movies, of course, in between scenes. That's kind of what they're talking about. Uh, this process and vision provided to be a lot, uh, provided to be at odds with what Kennedy and Lucasfilm wanted. All while Lord and Miller reportedly felt that they had quote zero creative freedom, end quote, and felt that they were being asked to perform quote again under extreme uh, scheduling constraints, end quote. Now all of this then resulted, like I mentioned, in Kathleen Kennedy calling up. Calling up, I feel like I said that weird, our writer producer Lawrence Kasdan to London, who was not crazy about Lord and Miller's process, which involved shooting out, which involved shouting out, I should say, alternate lines behind the monitor as opposed to shooting everything exactly as scripted. Now, although the all it does note that Lord and Miller uh, eventually did you know, fall in line with Lucasfilm's request to stick to the script, they'd shoot a few takes as written, then shoot more takes with alternate lines. Now, personally, I see nothing wrong with that. I think, you know, we, and I mentioned this last week, we all know Lord and Miller as directors. They are, they come from a comedy background, and they come from, we knew their style, we knew who they were as directors. So telling them to come in and change up their style just 100% isn't going to work. You know, you you can't really do that. I mean, I mean you could do that, but I think you're just hindering the process of Lord and Miller as directors. You hire them for a reason and you know, it just that 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 and you you guys know if you heard last week's podcast, I was very adamant about how you know you hire Lord and Miller and then you fire them 3 weeks before filming is supposed to be over. Because you didn't like their style from day one. That still makes no, absolutely no sense to me whatsoever. But, this part in particular here, the whole, you know, filming what is exactly scripted, 
that's fine, fine, do that. But Lord and Miller then went on to do their alternate takes. And that to me seems fine. I mean, Lord and Miller are directors. You have to trust your directors at some point. And I think, you know, at that point you have to kind of, you know, get like, yeah, you have to trust your directors and let them do what they think is best. They're there every day seeing these actors. They know if a scene's working or if a scene's not working. You know, things happen and you got to change it up sometimes. Uh, so I personally find nothing wrong with them doing alternate takes if they already shot what was already scripted. I'll give I'll give people that. So anyway, going back to the report, uh, Kazdan, who uh, now in London, had become somewhat, uh, uh, the way they put it, is a shadow director. And this un- understandably rubbed Lord and Miller the wrong way. Uh, it was also noted that Lord and Miller did not, did not want another director coming in, messing in with what they already done. We mentioned that last week. And at this point, Kennedy replaced them with, of course, Ron Howard. Uh, and Howard uh, said that he, when he came in, he it was said that he was very concerned with how Lord and Miller would react. And he actually emailed them to see if you know they were okay and see if this was okay. And apparently, a, a source told the outlet that Lord and Miller were very supportive uh, over Ron Howard coming in and taking over the reins to be a director. So uh, there was a press release. Yeah, the press release that came out when Ron Howard came out to direct that said that production uh, on the film would resume in July and would go through September instead of wrapping in July as it was previously planned. Now, this is key because Donald Glover has to get back to work on his FX series Atlanta and Amelia Clark has to get back to work on Game of Thrones. So that's a pretty thin amount of time that they have to get this done and Disney and Lucasfilm were very adamant that they were not going to move their Memorial Day weekend release next year for the movie so I don't know how they're going to do that I don't know how they're going to get that done body doubles or whatever we don't know so we'll find out the Hollywood Reporter does finally report that much of what Lord and Miller shot is very usable but it remains to be seen exactly how the Directors Guild of America will approach the film in terms of credit. Because now that is an issue. The DGA, the Directors Guild of America, the ones that, that look over the rights of directors in Hollywood, say that since Lord and Miller directed most of the movie, they have the right to say, this is our movie. We want our names on there. And Lucasfilm, from what I can understand uh, from the rights and everything they were talking about, they can't do anything about it. If Lord and Miller want their name on that, on the movie at the end of the credits, they have the right to do so. They have the right to have their name on there. Now, if Ron Howard comes in and shoots and directs an extensive amount of footage, he could also have the right to put his name on there. But that's going to get a little messy, maybe, from the sounds of it. So I'm going to wait to see what comes out of that. I'm sure that they will announce something uh, very probably soon once they start once they finish filming or closer to the release date for the movie I mean the whole situation is messy but in terms of this who gets the director's credit that that will that will wait to see I'll wait to I'm not even gonna try to speculate on that because I honestly don't know you know what what will happen with that so there you go that's the latest update on all the behind the scenes news on the Han Solo movie I want to start the podcast off with that because that's obviously this is going to be one of the biggest news items uh, for whatever amount of time people start talking about this and how many other sources come out and say, "Hey, this happened too." So we we don't know. Every anything that comes up from this movie has to be taken again at face value. We don't know. We weren't there. We don't know what's going on. So we're just gonna be. We gotta wait. And uh, it still bothers me. It's, it still does. It still irks me when to, to realize that Phil Lord and Chris Miller are no longer a part of this project because of creative differences. And the fact that they were fired right when the movie was about to end. That just... It just oh, at least principal photography was kind of about to end. It just... I don't know. It just has me... I don't know. I'm still aggravated a little bit about that. All right, so let's move on. Let's just move on. Uh, so we finally have final confirmation, maybe, sort of, about Venom and the other spinoffs in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Uh, and uh, there was a fan theory that was confirmed over the weekend 
from all the way back in Iron Man 2. And it connects, of course, to Spider-Man Homecoming. So, of course, with Spider-Man Homecoming almost upon us, next week, guys, next week, uh, the press tour is about to really rev up. And we're bound to hear a lot, a lot, uh, from producers and stars about the film. And, yes, even some theories. Uh, the first one we're going to tackle is the big one. So I'll get the theory. I'll get to the theory in the second part of this news item. Uh, the first one is, of course, is Venom and the other spin-offs that Sony Pictures is working on parts of the Marvel Cinematic Universe? Now, if you remember, Amy Pascal, the former head of Sony Pictures and one of the producers on Spider-Man: Homecoming, let it out that Venom, Silver and Black, and the other spin-offs they were working on, Kevin the Hunter and Mysterio, were adjuncts. To use her wording, to use her word, adjuncts, to the new universe that Spider-Man is now in. Which made, you know, fans go crazy a little bit thinking that Venom is now part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Considering that Spider-Man, the new Spider-Man movie, is taking place in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. However, Pascal and Kevin Feige did another interview. That's when she released that, that, that nugget and then kevin feige had that face the face scene around the world where he was like what the hell are you doing so he did they did another interview together and kind of course corrected what was already let out before now i'm not going to read the whole interview i'm just going to take basically what was said in their quotes that because it was a back it was kind of like this back and forth thing they were doing in the interview so the basic idea is that sony is going to focus on making a good venom movie first of course, along with their other characters, and establish the character himself before trying to force connect him to Spider-Man and this uh, uh, and this other universe, seemingly learning their lesson from what they did on The Amazing Spider-Man 2, where they were like, mm, fuck it, we're just going to put all these characters together, and that's it. It's over. Shared universe, all in one movie. It's just, it becomes messy, I don't care. So, Venom is not part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but he is part of the Sony Marvel Universe once they actually get started. Now, at the moment, Tom Holland will not appear in the spinoffs, but things could change if they work something out with him and Marvel. So, there you go. Venom, not part of that Marvel Cinematic Universe. Spider-Man may or may not still... The, the line's still blurred on that one. Uh, may or may not be part of this new little universe they're doing. So, I don't know. It's, uh, it's just... I want someone to finally tell us what the hell's going on. <laughs> just, I just, that plain period. Spider-Man... Just because just, they keep saying that, oh, maybe Spider-Man will appear in this new universe. Stop saying that. Because we're gonna... We're, we're, if he doesn't show up, then people are gonna complain. Alright. So, second part of the story is the fan theory. Now, this one was confirmed by Tom Holland and then Kevin Feige himself. They were talking to the Huffington Post. He says that the little boy that we saw in Iron Man 2, the one that Tony saves at the end who stands up to the hammer drone, was in fact Peter Parker. Say what? Now honestly, I don't know what to think of this. It's a little nice, cool little thing and you know it could possibly play a factor in the movie or in the future. But, and I know a lot of people are like really behind this. They're like, oh he was part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe the whole time awesome cool honestly for me i don't i just I, I i don't know like it's yeah it's a cool little fan theory awesome cool but at the same time it's like you didn't have the rights to spider-man at that point like were you working with sony this whole time because iron man 2 was a long time ago were you working with them the whole time to be like yeah we want spider-man in the universe let's make that little kid spider-man i don't think so I mean, I, I, I get it. I like it, but it's just like, uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. All right. Sticking with Spider-Man Homecoming, the sequel to Spider-Man Homecoming will begin immediately after Avengers 4. Now, this is kind of interesting. Of course, Marvel, presidents, uh, Marvel Studios president Kevin Feige let this out. The Phase 4 is, uh, will begin immediately following Avengers 4. And I'm speaking immediately after Avengers 4 because he was speaking with fandom. And of course, he's talking about Spider-Man since that's what they're promoting. So here's what he said. He said, what I think we should focus on is this Spider-Man who starred in Civil War and then has his movie and then will be in Avenger and be in the Avengers movie. And we start now the, the next one, which will start a few minutes after Avengers 4 wraps up as a story. 
So, of course, the question now becomes, okay, so the next Spider-Man movie will begin immediately after the events of Avengers 4. Will it, will there be a post credit scene that gets things moving, or will the film introduce something that Peter has to deal with immediately after the events of Avengers 4? We don't know what's going to happen, of course. And Avengers 4 is not the next Avengers movie. Of course, Avengers Infinity War is the next one, and then Avengers 4 comes out uh, years uh, years later. So, I don't know. That's that kind of that's kind of uh, that's kind of interesting to see how that plays out. And of course, we'll have to wait. We have we have a while to wait uh, to see how that pops up and how that uh, how that happens. So, yeah. So one little final tidbit. Uh, this isn't necessarily Spider-Man: Homecoming related, although it has to deal with Spider-Man: Homecoming in some way. Spider-Man: Homecoming will feature the opening scene from Luc Besson's newest film, Valerian and the City of a Thousand Planets. AMC, BB Theaters, Cinemark, Imagine, with the E instead of the I, Entertainment, and Harkin Theaters, uh, along with select regional circuits, will play the opening scene to Valerian and the City of a Thousand Planets. So it won't be in every theater, so just be aware of that. Uh, screens for Valerian and the City of a Thousand Planets have started popping up, and so far the early word of mouth is that it's actually pretty good. They do say it loses some steam near the end, but... Overall, they say it's really enjoyable. They say the uh, special effects are spot on and 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 awesome. So we'll see. Uh, we'll see if that turns out. Maybe we'll get a little glimpse of that in uh, Spider-Man: Homecoming. Again, not every theater is going to get it, but it looks like AMC is obviously a very big theater chain. So it looks like uh, if you go watch Spider-Man: AMC, you will get to see the opening scene of Valerian and the City of a Thousand Planets to make your own judgment. Again, a little kind of not necessarily connected to Spider-Man: Homecoming, but it was it did happen during the Spider-Man: Homecoming press tour. Michael Keaton confirms that he will be in the live-action Dumbo movie. It's been a while since we've heard anything from the live-action Disney live-action, I should say, uh, movie of Dumbo that will be directed by Tim Burton. Now, while promoting Spider-Man: Homecoming, Michael Keaton has confirmed that he will appear in the film after being reportedly in talks to join the project earlier this year. Speaking with Good Morning America, Keaton said that he was reuniting with Tim Burton once again, even joking around a little bit, saying how it's hard to work with someone as great as Tim as, and, and all that. Although he didn't say who he was playing, but back when he was in talks, it was said that he was going to play the villain of the movie. Keen would play Vandermeer, an, an exploitative circus owner who is looking to obtain a smaller circus operation from Medici, played by Danny DeVito in the movie. Yes, Danny DeVito is going to be in the live-action Dumbo movie, uh, whose attractions include the famed flying elephant Dumbo. The cast also includes Eva Green as a French trapeze artist that works in Van Amir's circuit, or circus, I should say, and Colin Farrell is also in talks for the lead role of a widower with two children whose attachment to Dumbo is the centerpiece of the film. Dumbo currently does not have a release date, but it will be apparently if from what the timeline looks like maybe start working or start shooting uh, sometime next year at least that's kind of what's going on i think from what's from what's been already said and what's been laid out so far so there you go michael keen uh, reuniting with tim burton and once again also playing a villain <laughs> the first trailer for, however for avengers infinity war could arrive with thor ragnarok this comes from Kevin Feige himself. Well, even in the quote, when he said this, he didn't even sound too sure either. He was like, ah, I don't know, maybe, uh, maybe around Thor Ragnarok, maybe? We don't, that's kind of, that's literally almost what he said. So, but it makes sense to release the trailer in front of Thor Ragnarok, considering that that will be the last Marvel movie before Infinity War. No, Black Panther's actually the last movie before Infinity War. But, uh, uh yeah, the Black Panther's, uh, coming out in February. So, um, I don't know. We'll see. But it kind of makes sense. You know, you got the, you got, because you, we can get the teaser in Thor Ragnarok and then get, you know, the last trailer during Black Panther. I think that kind of would make some sense. So, uh, there you go. Looking forward to an Avengers Infinity War trailer. Had to wait till November. <laughs> uh, we'll see. I mean, we'll get like a little something at Comic Con. Who knows? Well, or D23. Alright, so getting back to the comic book news, uh, not necessarily full comic book news, uh, but, no, actually, no, yeah, it kind of is, yeah, not lying to myself. Matt Reeves wants to make a Nor-driven detective story 
with the Batman movie. How about that? So Matt Reeves, of course, is ready to start his full press tour for War for the Planet of the Apes, which comes out in a few weeks. And, of course, the question about the Batman are bound to pop up. Case in point, speaking with new trailer buzz, Reeves talked about his vision on the movie, which finally gives us a better sense of what the film will be about, and maybe what fans have been wanting to see from the characters since appearing on the big screen, Batman being a detective in a noir-driven film. Noir, depending on how you want to say it. And this is what he said. All my films, what I try to do in almost, in almost Hitchcockian sense is use the camera and use the storytelling so that you become that character. And you emphasize with that point of view, there's a chance to do an almost noir-driven detective version of Batman that is a point of view driven in a very, very powerful way that hopefully is going to connect you to what's going on in his head and inside of his heart. So that's where the noir uh, detective quote comes from. He also, in the interview, went on to kind of compare Caesar and Batman, saying they both, uh, Caesar, of course, being the main character in the Planet of the Apes movies, that um, they're both kind of these two characters who struggle with their darker sides. And I thought that was a really interesting quote, comparing the two movies together. Now, of course, we, we've all seen the badass action-fighting figure uh, Batman before on the big screen, but we've never really seen the detective side of Batman in the movies. It's been hinted on, we see maybe little glimpses of it, but we never really get to see him like full-on detective mode. And I think that's kind of cool that Matt Reeves wants to bring that into the movie. I'm sure there'll be a lot of cool action sequences, but uh, you know the fact that he wants to you know make Batman kind of a noir kind of detective movie it's, it's actually kind of cool and the fact that he wants to make it somewhat like a Hitchcock movie is also very cool as well now everything on the Batman is still very early in development so whatever we say is pure speculation at this point and fan theories however filming is expected to begin sometime next year because again speculation is that the Batman movie will come out in 2019 obviously if any big updates happen I will let you guys know or you'll read it somewhere online. There's that. So st sticking with uh, the Batman in some sort of way, Ben Affleck, the man who plays the Batman, uh, a.k.a. Bruce Wayne, uh, is in talks to return for the Accountant sequel. Yeah, how about that? Uh, when Ben Affleck is getting things lined up for the Batman film, he is a producer on that film still. It looks like Affleck could return to play another role he played last year in The Accountant. Reports say that Affleck is in talks to join the sequel for the movie along with the returning director Gavin O'Connor and returning screenwriter Bill Dubiquiu, I think that's how you say his name. Uh, someone else who will possibly also return is John Bernthal, who appeared in the first film in a very surprisingly bigger role than you would expect in The Accountant. I'm not going to say what the character was, but didn't see that coming. Anyway, for those who don't know, Affleck played a autistic accountant that led a double life as a hitman for hire. The film wasn't that bad. It was a pretty solid thriller that gave Affleck something different to do uh, in his other films. It's not that bad of a movie. Uh, it's not going to be for everyone. Just want to point that out there. Even I know that. But uh, I thoroughly enjoyed it. So, it didn't really exactly scream sequel. But, you know, why not? It was always It was always thought of as a potential... Uh, franchise starter, so w why not make it a sequel? See what see what happens in, with a sequel. So uh, so yeah, Evan Peters will return for X Men Dark Phoenix, and a newcomer has been added to the cast. Many fans were quick to note that Evan Peters was in the was not in the press release to release two weeks ago that said uh, who was returning from the cast for X Men Dark Phoenix, but that has now changed. Reports say that Evan Peters will return to play the fan favorite character in the movies, Quicksilver. Of course, Peters uh, Peters' Quicksilver has been a fan favorite since his debut back in X Men: Days of Future Past, and had a bigger role in the last X Men film, X Men Apocalypse. Where he fits into this story, because he wasn't Quicksilver isn't a part of the Dark Phoenix story arc in the comics, is yet to be seen. But we'll, he'll probably have another standout sequence where he saves a bunch of people to a hit uh, song from. I think this movie's taking place in the '90s, so we'll see what song they pick for him to uh, to save a bunch of people in slow motion. 
cast also will now include a newcomer in Lamar Johnson. He is best known for the Canadian show The Next Step, although his role is being kept under wraps at the moment. Filming is set to begin very soon. I believe they start filming, uh, I, I think maybe sometime next week, at least from a report that I read. I thought I read a report that said they were starting next week. Uh, but uh, filming is expected to start soon, put it that way. Uh, sooner rather than later. And longtime X-Men Universe franchise writer and producer Simon Kinberg will direct the film, making his directorial debut in uh, this particular movie. X-Men Dark Phoenix will be released on November 2nd, 2018. I'm pretty sure we'll be hearing a lot more casting stories and little tidbits and rumors and stuff like that as uh, filming begins. So there's that. Moving on to the next news item. Neil Marshall talks about the Hellboy reboot. A few months ago, it was announced that Neil Marshall, the director of Dog Soldiers, The Descent, and a few episodes of Game of Thrones, was going to direct a reboot of Hellboy with David Harbour, from the, the sheriff from Stranger Things, attached to play the character of Hellboy. The original report said that Marshall was going to take a darker approach to the film and potentially make it a rated R movie. Now Marshall has talked about the project a little bit more about his approach toward the film, which sounds pretty damn awesome. Speaking with the Postmortem podcast, Marshall said he was going to use practical effects to the fullest intent instead of CGI, saying, quote, It's definitely going to be as practical as, practical as we can possibly make it. I love to do stuff in camera whenever I possibly can, and use CG as the amazing tool that it is to enhance or expand upon the world, but not use it to replace reality when you can do it for real. He also said he still aims to make the film rated R, saying we've been granted permission to do it R-rated, which for me is like taking the cuffs off. It's like, okay, so now we can just make the movie we want to make it, or the movie we want to make. It's not like I'm going to force it to be rated R, but if it happens to come out that way just because of my own sensibilities, then fine, and no one's going to stop us. So that's the main difference. And I'm sure, obviously, the success of things like Deadpool and Logan have not hurt that cause. But also, when you go back to the original material, it is bloody, and I'm going to embrace that. Now, this makes a lot of sense. This is pretty cool. The fact that they're going to use practical effects other than CGI. And that's kind of been the case for Neil Marshall's career. He doesn't really like using CGI in his movies. He uses CGI here and there, but he's always been one of those directors that really likes using practical effects. I mentioned Dog Soldiers, which is one of my favorite movies. It the It's about werewolves, and the werewolves are guys in suits with uh, practical effects put on them. The Descent didn't really use CGI, that, and that's a pretty great movie. If you haven't seen The Descent, that's a really good movie. Uh, I recommend you watch The Descent. That's your homework for the weekend. Go watch The Descent. He's done a bunch of other stuff as well, but he's never really used CGI. He's always been one of those guys that's... Yeah, we're gonna use CGI, but we're gonna like you said, we're gonna use it to enhance the the enhance the material, but not you know replace reality. And I kind of like that. I think that's kind of cool. Uh, so it should be interesting to kind of see how he plays around with that, uh, especially for Hellboy. And the fact that they gonna do they're gonna when it comes to the R rating, it's you know he's not forcing the idea of it's gonna be rated R. Although I'm sure to many that will be nice. I don't think we need absolutely a rated R movie to make a good Hellboy movie, but if that's what it takes to make a good Hellboy movie, then fine. Let it be rated R. Uh, the Hellboy movie is still being worked on. It doesn't have a firm release at the moment, but obviously this is a this is a good sign of things to come, at least in my opinion. Alright, so let's move on to the next news item. Michelle Rodriguez threatens to leave the Fast and the Furious franchise if things don't change. Hmm. Now, this could be something or nothing, depending on how things play out. So the Fast and the Furious franchise could be losing someone if her wishes aren't met. Now, Michelle Rodriguez took to Instagram to not only plug the fact of the fate of the Furious being out on, on a digital release, but also said this. Saying, quote, I hope they decide to throw some love to the women of the franchise on the next one. Or I just might have to say goodbye to the love franchise. It's been a good ride and I'm grateful for the opportunity and the fans and the studio has provided over the years. Now, some could probably say that Rodriguez has no place to say this or that she can get over herself. However, with the recent trend of giving women directors or, or giving them the leads in their movies... 
uh, is getting bigger nowadays because, of course, Wonder Woman, Patty Jenkins. I don't blame Rodriguez for getting on the bandwagon and saying a little bit about this. After all, it took eight movies for a female villain to finally pop up, played by Charlize Theron. And most of the women in the series are either eye candy, love interests, interests? Love interest. I'm just gonna leave it at you know no, I'm just gonna leave it at that. Like her character Letty, who is the wife of Vin Diesel's character, or they're being underdeveloped. Also, the series only now has two female hero roles in Letty and Ramsey, played by Natalie uh, Iman- uh, Immanuel. So it wouldn't hurt to bring in someone else, or at least, you know, bring in maybe a female director. Now, she doesn't actually say bring in fe- female director. She just says more love for the women of the franchise on the next one. So she probably wants, you know, her... Or, and maybe even uh, Natalie Emanuel's character, Ramsey, to have, you know, a little bit more, you know, a beefed up role instead of being kind of just on the side characters. I don't blame her for that. I can understand her frustration with that. However, the question, of course, becomes, will she actually leave? Who knows? Production on the next Fast and the Furious movie, Fast and the Furious 9, yes, you heard me, 9, is expected to begin next year, and it wouldn't hurt to have a female director, maybe, or even some more female characters fleshed out, or just flesh out the ones you already have. You only have two. Maybe you can bring back uh, Eva Mendes' character from the second one. Why not, if you want to throw them in there? Now, of course, this isn't the first time that the Fast and the Furious franchise has had some, uh, some news on some turmoil. Of course, last year was very famously known that Dwayne The Rock Johnson and Vin Diesel did not get along. And uh, to the point that um, they wouldn't talk to each other. And the fact that the studio kept them apart during the press tour. Now, this isn't the same thing. You know, she didn't go on Instagram and call, you know, some of her uh, male colleagues pansies. Like The Rock did, but or candy asses. She called, she called, he called them candy asses. Uh, so, we'll see. We'll see what happens with that. Alice Braga joins New Mutants, replacing Rosario Dawson. So it looks like Josh Boone's X, uh, X-Men spin-off, New Mutants, is going through a bit of a casting uh, shake-up. As Rosario Dawson has left the film uh, and has been already replaced by Alice Braga, Braga will now play Dawson's role as Dr. Cecilia Reyes, a medical doctor who has the ability to generate a protective biofield around herself and, quote, also has a lot more than she lets on. Unquote. The reasoning behind Dawson's departure is not known, at least at the moment, and Braga herself can currently be seen, if you don't know who she is, she can cur- currently be seen on USA's show Queen of the South, which just entered its new season, I believe a few weeks ago. She's also appeared in other films like Repo Man, I Am Legend, the Will Smith movie, Predators, and Elysium with Matt Damon. Braga now joins Anya Tyler-Joy, Maisie Williams, Charlie Heaton, uh, Henry Zaga and newcomer Blue Hunt. Uh, they will all play the new and the new and young mutants. The new mutants, obviously, it's the movie's called New Mutants. In Magic, Wolfsbane, Cannonball, Sunspot, and Moonstar, who are coping with their powers while also trying to escape a secret facility where they are being held against their will. Director Josh Boone, who directed, uh, oh, what did he direct? Uh, uh, the Fall in Our Stars. That's what he directed. Right? I think I sorry. I didn't write that when he directed, but I think that is what he directed. He said he will take a horror slash thriller approach to the spin off, drawing heavily on the eighties comics by Chris Claremont and a few other writers as well. Uh, New Mutants will start shooting soon. They will start shooting next month in July and opens the film opens on April thirteenth, two thousand eighteen. And finally the big news item of the week, at least at the time of this recording. Conjuring 3 is moving forward, but it loses James Wan as a director. That's kind of a bummer in my in my mind. Uh, the first part isn't too surprising, but the second part is. So, reports say that New Line and Warner Brothers are moving forward with a third Conjuring film, and they're bringing back the Conjuring 2 screenwriter, Dev- David Leslie Johnson, uh, to write the script. However, James Wan, who directed the first two films, will not come back to the director's chair but he will be a producer on the movie. So he will still be involved in the process of the movie making, but just not as a director. Now, Deadline, which broke the story, doesn't have word yet on who will take over, but with a different director in the chair, the third film could probably 
have a very different feel to it. And it wasn't too long ago that producer uh, Peter Safran said that the potential third movie, at least at the time, uh, wouldn't be a, haunt, a haunted house movie. But we'll dig deeper into the Warrens' uh, deep category of investigations. Now, I didn't actually say what exactly that would be, but uh, if they're not doing a haunted house movie, you know, the first two movies kind of were haunted house movies in a sense, maybe that's why they don't want to bring back James Wan. At least that was the the feeling when the news came out. Turns out that uh, James Wan may still be involved in Aquaman. At least that was a report, so that kind of means that they're going to start production on The Conjuring 3 very, very soon. But I don't know about that. Maybe he just wants to keep his focus... Wan wants to keep his focus on other stuff. Uh, there was talks about James Wan not coming back to direct Conjuring 3. I remember... I think I remember that, that he wasn't... There was talks of him not coming back to direct The Conjuring 3 after The Conjuring 2 came out. Uh, so I don't... You know, there, I don't, it's not too surprising. But at the same time, it's like... I mean, if James Wan wants to branch out and do other stuff... He hasn't only done horror movies. He's gone on, you know, he directed one of the Fast and the Furious movies. Uh, he directed, um, he's directing Aquaman. That's not a horror movie. It may have, it may have horror aspects, maybe, but it's not a horror movie. And he directed um, uh, Death Sentence. Uh, one, it was one of the one of his first like few movies that he did. Uh, I would think it was it was after Saw, but I don't remember it, how after Saw it was. I think it was like his, I think it might have been the second movie he did after Saw. I think he did, uh, what was it, that, the doll movie, Dead Silence, before he did Death Sentence. I could be wrong about that. I might have even, it might not have even been called Dead Silence. Actually, it might have been called Dead Silence. I don't know. Uh, but anyway, um, so James Wan's not going to come back direct, and I'm kind of bummed out about that. He, 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 these are his movies. The Conjuring movies are his movies. And I like the first two Conjuring movies. Now, there's no word yet on when production will start, like I mentioned. But uh, we do have multiple spin-offs, of course, in the works for the Conjuring universe. We have Annabelle Creation coming out in August. We have The Nun, which uh, I believed either finished filming or is about to finish filming. And that's set to come out next year. And then, of course, we have the recently announced The Crooked Man coming out as well. Now, I can't wait to see the third movie. Like I said, I, I liked uh, I liked, um, I liked, liked the first two Conjuring movies. I like James Wan as a director, period. So, I don't know who they would bring in. Personally, I kind of, if they're going to bring someone else in, maybe bring in uh, David F. Sandberg, who directed Lights Out, and he directed Annabelle Creation. Uh, because he, he's, you know, he's worked with Juan before. He's worked with Juan on Lights Out. Juan was a producer on Lights Out, and of course Juan was probably a, probably an executive producer on Annabelle Creation. So, why not bring in David F. Sandberg? He seems kind of like the perfect guy to bring in so we'll see all right so let's move on so that's all the news items of the week let me know what you guys thought of all the movie news items down below of course if anything drops because that is a tendency sometimes movie news items drop all the time after the podcast goes up you guys can go like the facebook page facebook.com slash movie pit that's facebook.com slash movie pit if you want to click a link you can go to the fa the description also the Facebook page uh, the description slash show notes area there's a link down there while you're down there you can also go check out my WordPress account where I do non spoiler written reviews on movies that I watched over the weekend that's movies with Chris dot WordPress dot com movies with Chris dot WordPress dot com uh, there's that also while you're down there you can go check out my Twitter and Instagram you want to follow me on there you can you can also go follow the SoundCloud page. And depending on when you're listening to this, go like, uh, go click a link on the iTunes because the podcast is finally on iTunes. So you guys go check that out. Or if you're listening on iTunes, you can guys go check out the Facebook page, oh, the Facebook page, the SoundCloud page, or even the YouTube page. Uh, so there is that podcast. is in a lot of places, guys. So go check those out. Uh, and also while you're down there, you guys, also while you guys are down there, you guys can go check out the links to the trailers. So there you go. All right, so let's move on to this week's releases. I don't know why I was having trouble saying the word releases, but we, let's talk about this week's releases. Uh, there's no big limited releases this week, which is uh, oddly surprising, at least from what I saw uh, on, on the charts. So we're going to go right to the wide releases of the week. We've already had one wide release come out on Wednesday, and that was Baby Driver. Of course, written and directed by Edgar Wright. After being coerced into working for a crime boss, a young getaway driver finds himself taking part of a heist doomed to fail. The film stars Ansel Elgort, Lily James, 
John Hamm, Isa Gonzalez, Jamie Foxx, John Bernthal, and Kevin Spacey. Been getting nothing but good reviews, so I can't wait to watch this. This is something. This is a movie I've been waiting to see since the very first trailer. Uh, I am a huge fan of Edgar Wright. I've liked everything he's done so far, and I have a feeling that I'm gonna like, maybe love Baby Driver. So, so like I mentioned, Baby Driver already on theaters. Uh, the beginning of, in the middle of the week, so there is that. But uh, the movie's coming out or already out today. We have the house. A dad convinces his friends to start an illegal casino in his basement after he and his wife spend their daughter's college fun. The film stars Will Ferrell, Amy Poehler, Ryan Simpkins, Sam Richardson, Rob Hubel, and of course many others. Uh, this, I mean, doesn't look too bad. I mean, I, I look, I like Will Ferrell. I like Amy Poehler. You know, not all their movies are for everybody. The humor is a little, you know, sometimes it could get kind of awkward. And I think that's kind of what they were going for, kind of sometimes. But uh, the house doesn't look too bad. I'm, I'm, I'm going to go watch it, uh, even if it is kind of just like a dumb comedy. You know what? Sometimes we need dumb comedies. Sometimes we need dumb comedies in our lives. So, the house. Finally, the big wide release, the other big wide release this week, is Despicable Me 3. Gru meets his twin brother, Drew. Who he never knew about. The voice cast includes Steve Carell, Kristen Wiig, Trey Parker, Russell Brand, Steve Coogan, Jenny Slates, and Julie Andrews. Uh, I've I've watched the Despicable Me movies. I ended up watching. I like them. I you know they're not that bad, honestly. I you know they're 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 okay. I mean, yeah, they're kids movies, but you know they're they're not they're not too bad. So uh, Despicable Me three, I'm probably end up going to go watch, and I, I am gonna go watch it. I'm not gonna say I'm I'm probably going to end up watching it. No, I think I am gonna go watch Despicable Me three. Uh, I know they're kids movies, but sometimes they're just dumb fun. You know, you never know. So. Alright, so those are your releases of the week again. Despicable Me 3, The House, and of course, already out in theaters, Baby Driver. So, let's move on to this week's box office predictions. Uh, My picks were off last week, once again, because, yeah. Uh, Because of, yeah, that's what it was. Uh, So, last week, my predictions were Transformers, A Last Night, and number one. Cars 3 at number 2, Wonder Woman at number 3, All Eyes on Me at number 4, and The Mummy at number 5. Last week's actual box office, Transformers, The Last Night at number 1, Wonder Woman jumped back to the front of the pack at number 2. Cars 3 fell down to number 3. 47 meters down was number 4, that made a big jump, and The Mummy was at number 5 at the box office last week. So uh, th- again, like I mentioned this this weekend, we kind of we have kind of a little bit of a. It kind of feels like a long weekend, even though Independence Day is on a Tuesday. It kind of just feels like it's going to be a long weekend because maybe some people are taking that Monday off. We don't know. So uh, the my picks for this week, I don't know. I mean, I've been I don't know. Uh, so I think the Spickle with Me Three will win the box office. It's a kids movie. It's a Spickle with Me Three. Kids love Minions. I mean, you show Minions in the trailer, people are going to go watch it. So, it's Pickle Me 3 at number 1. I want Baby Driver to be number 2. And I, you know what? Damn it, I'm going to lock it in. I'm going to lock it in at number 2. Because I think it's just... A, a, it's just it's getting awesome reviews. I think the word of mouth is really going to help. So, Baby Driver number 2. I think Transformers going to drop... The Last Night's going to drop down to number 3. It has the lowest box office opening for a Transformers movie ever. So I, I think that's not gonna. Help. I think that doesn't do any favors for the remaining of the uh, of its box office run. So I think it's gonna drop down to number three. I think the house will be number four. It is Will Ferrell. It is Emmy Poehler. But you got a packed weekend this week with uh, Baby Driver, Despicable Me three, and you know whoever else wants to go watch Transformers the last night. Don't do it. But um, you got those people, and then uh, I think Wonder Woman will. Uh, go at number five at the box office i think wonder woman surprised a lot of people that have jumped back to the number two spot so i wouldn't count wonder woman out too much it may surprise some people this weekend but those are my picks so wonder woman at number five the house at number four transformers last night at number three baby driver at number two and despicable me three at number one those are my picks i'm probably gonna be wrong i'm okay with that whatever 
All right, guys. Thank you guys so much for listening to the podcast this week. Uh, if anything big drops, of course, you can go to, over to the Facebook page at facebook.com slash moviepit. Again, there's a link down below in the description slash show notes area if you want to go click on that. Give me a like over there. It really helps me out. And uh, you guys can pre- pretty much, if you like the page, you get an early preview of what we're going to talk about here on the podcast With the exception that I get a lot more into detail here on the podcast a little bit. And uh, you can't hear my rage or anger sometimes over the Facebook page. So, uh, so yeah, uh, go do that. Go check out the WordPress accounts. Uh, Also down below, again, my links, uh, a link, not necessarily a link, but my username for Instagram and Twitter is down there. So you guys can go go follow me if you want. Uh, Again, there are links to the, if you're listening to this on YouTube, there's links to the SoundCloud and to the iTunes, I'm on iTunes now, so listening on SoundCloud or YouTube is too inconvenient for you guys. Go to YouTube. Go to, go to YouTube. Go to iTunes. I'm already mixed up. Go to iTunes. Uh, subscribe over there. Leave me a rating and a review, and I will read it on the podcast when it happens, uh, and give you guys a shout out. Uh, I would really love it if you guys do that. It helps me out in the long run, and helps me, uh, you know, climb the rankings up a little bit. So. I'm on iTunes now, link down below in the description slash show notes area if YouTube and SoundCloud are too inconvenient for you guys. If you're on iTunes and you want to go, you know, like my YouTube page, I'm going to start doing a lot more stuff on my YouTube page with my own little face so you guys can see what I look like now. Um, I'll be doing that and uh, the SoundCloud, of course, will be SoundCloud. You guys go listen there. So yeah, that's all I got for you guys. I think that's it. I think that's all. That's no, no, no witty humor anymore. I'm done. Uh, I feel like I'm done now. I feel like I feel like I'm draining for some reason. I don't know why. Uh, so, uh, but yeah, that's it. That's all I got for you guys this week. Thank you guys so much for listening. Uh, again, like I mentioned, it's going to be Independence Day on Tuesday. So here in the states, I don't know if I have any out of state listeners. If I do, let me know who you are. Uh, but um, it's Independence Day on Tuesday. Uh, have a happy, safe Independence Day. For whatever, if I, I, I like I mentioned on my Transformers last night review. I'm gonna try to be doing. I'm gonna try to be doing. I'm gonna try to do. See, I can't talk now. I really can't. Uh, I'm gonna try to do a uh, review, a spoiler-filled review podcast for Baby Driver. May, uh, maybe I'll throw Despicable Me Three in there as well. But I'm gonna try to do a spoiler-filled review at the beginning of the week on Monday. If I can't for whatever reason, uh, I don't know if I'll be doing it for the other week, or I'll just make the podcast next week. This end of the week podcast, the movie roundup. Uh, news podcast just longer and put the reviews of that up in here so I don't know I don't know just yet but um, for whatever reason you don't listen you don't hear my voice at the beginning of the week just have a happy safe Independence Day you know it's fireworks don't burn yourselves don't blow anything off Uh, don't do anything stupid don't do anything too stupid be safe have fun you know enjoy you know all the I'm gonna be grilling out like crazy so I'm gonna get fat uh, so hopefully you do too. Uh, just be careful out there. Be safe. Have some fun. Don't get too crazy. And uh, that's it. I'm done. Thank you guys so much for listening to the podcast this week. You guys are great. You guys are awesome. Go subscribe. Give me a follow. Give me a review and rating. Let me know what your favorite news item of the week. What did you guys think of the movie news items of the week? Of the trailers? Of the movies that are coming out? Let me know. I want to hear your opinion. Because you guys hear my opinion all the time. I want to hear your rest. I want to hear your guys' opinion. Or gals. Yeah, never know. I might have girls listening to my podcast. Uh, so, yeah. I'm done. Okay, I'm done. I'm, I'm for real done this time. Thank you guys for listening. Have fun. Be safe. And as always, go watch some movies. Whoop, whoop. Yeah! Give it up! Movies! <laughs>